everyone, this is Maxim from Element.O and in this video I wanted to show you how to make any SVG icons work with Elementor settings. So for example here uh, we have these two color icons that comes from an Elementor template but only one of these color is uh, we can be, can be changed from the settings so only like the main one and then the the sizing this part works fine so how can we get this to work for both colors or more in case where there are uh, more than two colors and as well as how can we get any icon uh, any svg icon that you might find anywhere online to work at all to start with with the sizing options here and then the color options here for one color and for more than one color I will need to use the global colors for this so Elementor Pro uh, will be required for when there is more than one color so let's uh, jump right into this so the first thing let's look at the ideal uh, illustrator settings for when you want to export ESVG to use in Elementor and you, you need to use this path in uh, Illustrator so file export export as and then you give it a name and, and you choose the SVG and then for object IDs ideally you would give it a layer you ideally you would you would give your layers uh, good names and then you would select layer names otherwise you can select something like the uh, short I think the option is like short uh, names but uh, it's better to have unique and uh, relevant uh, layer names and then to choose layer names for the other option uh, you should essentially replicate what's in this screenshot here so presentation attribute the fonts most of the time you will want to convert to outlines unless you're loading the exact same font that's in your SVG uh, on your website in this case you, you might want to keep this to SVG but usually you will, you will want to convert to outlines images embed uh, ideally you would not have any image really in your SVG just uh, paths and then uh, object IDs layer names and the rest of everything I'm going to show you uh, is the same whether you got your uh, SVG from Illustrator, whether you created it yourself and exported it in this way, or whether you found it online, essentially. And uh, in our case, we are going to use a, an icon that uh, we'll find online. So let's just go to iconfender.com, which is really good for this. For this demo, let's just go with a free icon. And this one here looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's use that. And then of course you will want to navigate to where your icon is. All right, so here I have it. And now let's open it in a code editor. You will need a code editor for everything I'm going to show you in this video. So I suggest if you don't already have one, I suggest you get a Visual Studio. It will be easier to follow the instructions and it's pretty much the best one out there. Okay, so now we have the markup, the actual uh, SVG file. This is like what the SVG is, is made up. So it, it's the markup for it. It's code. So that's where we need to tune everything so that it works with Elementor. The first thing you'll want to do it now, you see it's like on one very, very long line. So it, it's not fun. Let's click on Alt X. Uh, I mean Alt uh, Z, actually. And this will uh, make the lines break to kind of... Um, it will make them wrap without creating new lines. So we are still on line one, but now it's it's wrapping. And the first thing you'll want is to just copy everything. And then head over to SV, uh, SVG OMG. And then uh, you will have the paste markup option. Click A and then just click Ctrl V to paste or Command V. And now we have this, so we can already see a kind of small problem. 
Uh, let's go back to have a look what it's supposed to look like. So in the middle, yeah, there is supposed to be this kind of circle. I'm not sure why right now it's like this, maybe. First, let me reset the settings just in case. Okay. All right. Okay, so now you see we have the uh, icon in SV SVG OMG. And here you see this website allows us to compress the SVG icon so that it's even lighter. And it also allows us to clean it up. So that's what we're going to use it. And essentially what you want is to compress it, you see the precision. You want this to be as low as possible while still keeping, like while still looking right. Or sometimes it can look like different, but you still like it, so that's fine. But essentially you get the precision as low as possible. Uh, while the icon looks the way you want it to look. So here you see the styling change when I decrease the precision from uh, 3 to 2. Usually you can get to 1 before getting into problems. So, But for this particular SVG it looks like 3 is the lowest we, we can go. So let's, uh, let's pick that. And then uh, you will want to enable multipass. doesn't make a huge difference in this case, almost none, but it does make a small one, so let's just keep it uh, enabled. Uh, okay, and then let's go down the list. Essentially, you will want pretty much everything that's by default. Uh, AX style to attributes. You want this on. Usually, you should not really have to if you exported it, as I mentioned from uh, Illustrator, but if you found it online, you will want uh, the style to attributes uh, enabled. Remove raster image. Usually you will pretty much always want this, but to, to start with, there should not be any raster image in your SVG files. Uh, if they are, of course, and you enable this, then it will kind of look different. What this means is sometimes in some SVG files, you will have essentially embedded PNG uh, images or JPEG image. So it's not a vector anymore, or a part of it at least, it's not a vector at all, but it's an embedded uh, PNG or JPEG file, and usually you never want this really in your SVGs. So, and sometimes it's not obvious that you have a raster image, so you can just toggle this on and off. If something disappears, or if the whole thing disappears, it, it means it will all uh, just like a PNG that was kind of encoded as a SVG, but it was not really a vector at all. So you can just enable it. Uh, this, you can try to see if it makes a difference. In our case, it doesn't. Let's keep it enabled. Okay, so everything else is fine. Uh, sort attributes. Let's keep it off. You, you see uh, in the percentage it made a very small difference. And in OSVG it, it looked the same, so let's just keep it off. And then the important settings are here. So, prefer view box to width height. This is one of the very important ones. This one needs to be enabled. And then remove style elements also. And remove script element, you can enable it just for extra security. And that's uh, even more important if you get it from somewhere online. If you created the SVG yourself from Illustrator, it's not really important because you didn't insert uh, uh, malware script in, in it. Okay, so after we've got everything set up as it should be, you will click here to copy the SVG as text. And then you will go back to your uh, SVG code, you will paste. And now we have the, the cleaned up SVG. So it's still a lot of code, but uh, it's cleaned up. And now let's move on to the other uh, part. So how to make it work. Now, essentially, first, maybe let me say. So if you see now it starts with SVG. Uh, every time you will get it after cleaning, cleaning it up here, it will always start with SVG. Before, if I go back to before, you see it's, it started with this and then with some uh, HTML command. All of this was completely unneeded, so that's why it got cleaned up and completely removed. 
But you see before also what we add here. So there was a fixed height and a fixed width here. So this is the part that enabling a prefer view box to width height removed. And this is very important to get the, let's go back there. So to get the size option to work. Otherwise, it will always be 64 pixel, no matter what you enter here, it won't change anything. So for this, for the sizing to work from within Elementor, the, uh, the width and height uh, attributes on the SVG element needs to be removed. So if we go forward and here, so now in our cleaned up version, we have the SVG element here and we only have the view box, which is very important to keep the proportion uh, and everything. But there is no fixed width or height. So now essentially as it is now, this SVG already works uh, with the sizing options that you will find in Elementor. However, it still doesn't work with the color option. So for this, and now keep in mind that this one is a single color SVG. So for this to work, essentially you can just click on Control F to find and then make the uh, pound symbol. And here you see, uh, so this, this was just a kind of shortcut to find where the, the colors are. So you see there is a color A, color A, color A. Uh, so it looks like it's only those three and it's all with the keyword fill. Actually one, two, three, four. Yeah, so those four here. So you will want to completely remove this. So fill equals, two, 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 two. we remove this whole thing. So in uh, Visual Studio and in most code editor, you will click on Control H after overlighting it, Control H and then replace, you keep this empty and then you can click on here to replace all. So it's now uh, what we've done is essentially erase it, uh, these four instances completely. So now there is no fill uh, value at all and no colors at all. And it might sound a little bit strange, like why like there is no colors, it, it won't work. But uh, the, the, the settings from within Elementor, they will take care of, of adding the uh, required uh, code to, to make the coloring work. All right, so let's go back to SVG. Now let's save it. Let's go to Elementor and let's actually test this out. Of course, it needs to actually work. So let's go here, let's upload. Or oh, uh, icon, I, I saved it, of course. I click on Control S to save. Let's insert. So it looks good. Eh? It looks good. Eh? Now let's see if everything works. So let's test the size. So the size works. And then let's test the color, even if we can already see that it's working just fine. So that's, uh, yeah, so it, it works. Uh, so that's essentially how you would uh, manage for uh, any uh, single color uh, SVGs and then it works with the icon box and of course it also works with just the normal like icon element. So if I add it here, it will work exactly the same way because these these are essentially the, 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 same, the same thing. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, something a little bit more complex. So to multicolor uh, icons. So in this folder, I have a nice set of two color icons that I found. Uh, let me bring this up a bit. So that I found um, here and then uh, Actually, well, I don't really know where he has it, but it was from uh, this dude on uh, iconfender.com. You will find the link uh, in the description. So he has uh, a bunch of icons. I took these three from him. 
So what you really want to do is, let me go back here. So place all your two color icons in one folder and then on this folder, this is just to essentially make it uh, easier to work with and have a better, like to work faster. So place them all in one folder and then uh, right click on this entire folder and click on open with, open with code. So let me resize this. Okay, so now you see we have our folder here with the three uh, icons uh, open. There is one part where there is not, not really any shortcut. Uh, so you need to do all of them one by one. But usually after you set up one, the other, you see all, all of our previous settings are still enabled. So it's much quicker. Let's just go back to see if we can add, uh, uh, maybe remove a bit of precision to see if we can compress them more. So you see now at two, it still looks pretty much exactly the same. There is no difference. At one, it looks the same. And then even at, uh, at zero, there really isn't uh, any difference. And we even have multipass enabled. So let's just keep this and everything else should be pretty much fine as it is. Uh, the most important settings, of course, are uh, these here, uh, as well as the, the one I covered earlier. So style to attributes is very important and inline styles as well. Okay, so let's just uh, copy this. Let's paste this here. And then let's click Alt Z to make it just all on one line. And uh, let's do the same for all of them very quickly. So like this, it looks fine. So, all right. And finally, this one paste looks fine. Well, this one, actually, this one misses one color, right? Yeah. Uh, Let me... So I guess we'll need to find out why. So is it something to do with precision? Why Why is this one so original? Okay, so the precision seems fine. Maybe at one it looks a little tiny bit better. So let's... Uh, let's see... Style to attributes. Uh, Actually, let's just start from the start. It will be, it will be easier. So let's reset. Let's get this to one multipass. Okay, so this is fine. And then let's uh, style to attributes. Okay, so it was not a raster image at least. And then uh, uh, okay, so it's the style elements that's needed. So let's keep the style elements. It will still work with it, so no problems. Actually, it's good that uh, this uh, happened. All right, so now we have all three um, multicolor icons ready to be made compatible with uh, elemental color settings. So let's go jump back in uh, elemental, actually. And let's... Um, Okay, so the first thing you will need to do then, before we can uh, make them compatible, is you want to go under uh, Site Settings. Because we are going to use the global colors, and that's, that's how uh, multicolor SVGs will be kind of easy to change uh, later on. Okay, so here you see I already have SVG 1, 2, 3. So we'll just reuse this actually. So now this is the slightly uh, technical part. So let's just preview this uh, page from the front end. Uh, actually, where could I? Uh, I will need to exit this. Uh, maybe not. If I click there, I should be fine. Okay, so let's go to our icons. So this we can see it's still working. But now 
uh, what you will need to do is to right click, click on inspect. So maybe I did this fast a little bit. So right click anywhere on your page and then click on inspect. And then you will have this. Then it doesn't really matter where you are, what you will want to do. Well, actually, first, let me say, for you, it will probably look something like this. So you might want to click on those three dots uh, to bring it down. Uh, and then you, what you will have will, will be very similar to this. So here on the right, you have the styles. This is the styles that's applied on the element we are currently inspecting. So if I change element, this changes. But for right now, this is not relevant. So what you will want to find for now is the uh, elemental kit and then your uh, number will probably change. But elemental kit something. And here at the start of it, you will see that we have the E global color and then there are a bunch of them. And essentially it's in order. So the last three are those three eggs. So if I go back here, so those three SVG one, two, three, they are the three colors that are at the bottom. And why we want this is to get the actual variable nine, because the name that we give a elemental kind of ignores this completely and then create random names. So we need these uh, random names. So in our case, we have only two colors. So we'll use the SVG one and two. So you, you copy this value here, the value of the CSS variable. And then in here, uh, in your folder, essentially, with this open, you will click, uh, and, and for you, you, would, you won't have this history thing. It's just a, um, uh, a plugin that I have in Visual Studio. But for you, it will look like this. So then you will click Control Shift uh, H. And then this will be a global replace. So we will replace with var and then um, this. And then what we, we replace? Well, it's the, these fill colors. So now instead of deleting completely the fill, which would not really work for multicolor SVGs, at most we would have, uh, it, it would all become the same color, essentially in Elementor settings. So to keep it as two different colors, we keep all the fill uh, there, but then we change the value of the color and we replace it with the CSS variable. So we will search for this color here and we will replace it with all variable like this. So it needs to be what we copy pasted, uh, surrounded by var and then the closing parenthesis. And then of course there are results uh, in the tree files. So we want to uh, click here to replace all, replace tree occurrence across tree file. So that's what we want. So now you see fill equals four, and then we have our CSS variable that's linked with Elementor settings. So let's quickly do the same for this variable here. Now what we will replace is this. So let's replace it here. And we want to replace that color. And let's say you add three or, or more colors, uh, the, the, the exact same process would work for however many colors. So now, now it says nine, it's, it's, again, it's because of my plugin, but probably there are, uh, or, or, or maybe there was uh, uh, a few more in, in a few files. In this file, there is only one, but, but maybe in one of them, there was uh, more than one instance. In any case, so that's, yeah, so that's it. So now finally, you just save, click Control S. So let's save all icons. And again, if you add more than two different fill colors, you would do the exact same process with however many you have. Okay, and finally, let's just uh, import these icons in Elementor. And actually, let's replace them. So first, or now we'll just close this. And uh, we'll replace those three icons here with all multicolor icons. So, not sure why it's crawled back up to the top. Let's delete this. Let's 
Well, actually, I cannot delete this. So let's upload. Let's uh, get them. Now you see it in my preview. Of course, they don't have any color set anymore. So in the preview, they are two. Uh, they are only one color. Essentially, they are no colors. When it's all black, it it's like it's the same as if there were no colors set at all. But after we add them, so let's get this. Let's get this, and as you see, uh, it's working. So let's uh, let's actually quickly, yeah, give all of them one. So this, and then not a, but upload SVG, and then a. All right. Let's copy paste these tiles, and then finally. Uh, let's go in site settings and then global colors and finally we have control of the colors from within uh, Elementor so we can make this work exactly as we see fit and then this color uh, and yeah uh, that's how it would work and again for three or four colors it would work the same way you would just have to add a variable for each color that you need and then you can control them directly from a so that's uh, pretty cool right all right so that's it so uh, I hope you have uh, enjoyed this tutorial and uh, yeah please let me know what you think uh, in the comment uh, if you'd like to subscribe that would be awesome and let me know what else you'd like me to uh, talk about uh, in an upcoming video. Cheers!